Welcome to the uh, November meeting of the Tecumseh Committee of Adjustment. Welcome you all here. Um, in terms of roll call, we have a note from Tom Marantat that he can't attend tonight, but everyone else is here. So just so that note is made. And on the agenda, I'll call the meeting to order. On the agenda, we have basically three um, applications to hear. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest from any of the members? Seeing none. Uh, we have minutes from September 27th. Motion. That's Daniel and Laurie. Uh, any addition to lease correction? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, and then we also have minutes from October 25th, which were pre circulated as well. Motion on those. Uh, Tony and Lori. Uh, any addition, deletion, correction? Seeing none. All in favor? Carried. Um, so that brings us to applications. So, Donna, are you there? I am. The first application is uh, for a minor variance for 12534 Ballard Street. Application for minor variance A50 21, Robert Kojuski, 12534 Ballard Street. The purpose of the application is to request relief from subsection 7.1.9 of zoning bylaw 1746, which establishes that the minimum front yard depth is 7.6 meters, 24.9 feet. The applicant is requesting relief to permit the construction of approximately 307 square meters, 1,008 square feet addition, resulting in a front yard depth of 2.86 meters, 9.4 feet, which is consistent with the front yard depth of the existing dwelling in accordance with the attached sketch. The subject property is designated residential in the Town of Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R2 in the zoning bylaw 1746. The correspondence received is as follows. Engineering, as part of the building permit process, the owner will be required to submit an engineered drainage and grading plan showing how stormwater will be controlled to prevent it from flowing onto neighboring properties to the satisfaction of the town's chief building official. No comments from building, no comments from fire services, and IRCA's uh, response is as follows. The site is not located within a regulated area that is under the jurisdiction of IRCA Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. As a result, a permit is not required from IRCA for issues related to Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act development, interference in wetlands and alterations to shorelines and watercourses regulations under the Conservation Authority Act Regulation 15806. With a review of background information and aerial photograph, IRCA has no objection to the application for minor variance. The following public comments were received. Uh, the following property owners have signed a petition indicating that they are supportive of the minor variance application. 12540 Ballard Street, 12522 Ballard Street, 12535 Ballard Street, 12520 Clarice Avenue, 12540 Clarice Avenue, 12546 Ballard Street, 12525 St. Thomas Street, 12531 St. Thomas Street, 12523 St. Thomas Street, 12545 St. Thomas Street, and 12560 Clarice Avenue. And that's it. Uh, thank you, Donna. Um, I was looking for uh, Mr. Smith, who's here on this one. If you could turn his camera on. And Robert Kolejewski, the applicant. Could he turn his camera on and we can says I can't turn my camera on, but um, oh, okay. I'm here. Sorry about that. Okay, so which of you is going to speak to this? Usually at this point I ask 
the applicant or a proponent um, to have anything they want to add for the committee's wisdom? Sure, yeah, so, yeah. Yep, Sorry. go ahead. Okay, yeah, so um, the, the owners here are um, um, trying to get this application through um, to extend their their the existing home there um and they want it within the same character as the existing home so um saying that they want it in line with it it makes sense more um on the floor plan wise um if you've seen um they also did a powerpoint to kind of explain further why they would like to do this uh they they want to avoid moving their pool. They don't want to cut down um, a mature willow tree in the back. And they want to like maintain that backyard space that they uh, currently have and utilize this large um, kind of side yard that they currently have. Uh, uh, currently have. Um, so, um, you know, other than a, a bedroom kind of jutting into that the front yard. Um, I think we've been able to maintain a large portion of this, uh, even stepped back from the existing home. So, um, you know, and th they've gone out of their way and they've also got all of these signatures from neighbors and, and kind of spread it around the neighborhood. Um, we've done the design. So they've done a lot of due diligence to kind of, um, you know, help, help, uh, the city or the town understand why they would really like to do this. And, and I think it fits in well with the neighborhood and the existing home. Uh, Rob, Rob, do you wanna jump in and say anything else? I think you hit majority of the points on the head there. Um, yeah, I mean, we, the additional um, lot that we have open right now, pretty much we were hoping to utilize all of that possible space as possible, which is directly beside the home. Um, and it makes it a little more difficult for us if we were to have to push it back because of the pool in the way, uh, the tree. And we were thinking it might be easier to keep things flush with the front of the house. Um, we were going around gaining signatures from all the, the neighbors and we were kind of showing them a little picture uh, of a proposed plan and they all loved it. and and they're looking forward to seeing the finished product. Um, if it ends up being the way that we hope it is. Um, and yeah, like I said, we, we uploaded a PowerPoint presentation um, that listed many points of what we were trying to, uh, trying to focus on as far as why we wanted to do it this way. And, um, you know, the main thing is not, I mean, we have, our plan is to add two or three additional bedrooms and we can't really afford to reduce that square footage if we want to keep our plan the way it is and we're hoping that you know everything would be okay as far as how we have it set out right now um that's pretty much it i think brad pretty much mentioned the majority of everything that we had in mind there okay thank you Robert. um did all the members get an opportunity to look at the powerpoint that was sent earlier with this is there any need to go through it as part of the record, I I don't really see other than to note that we got it. Um, I don't see that we need. We've all seen it, so unless you have specific questions about it, we don't need to go ahead and show it. Um, so time for questions from the committee. We don't have anybody uh, from the public other than by the by virtue of that um, petition that wants to speak to this tonight that I know of. So uh, questions from the committee? Lori. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good evening to the applicant and uh, representatives. A question about the petition, I guess it would be the list of residents, or maybe this question actually is to administration. When looking at the aerial, it's hard to tell unless I do the exercise myself, but is there, is there any way that we can identify if the next door neighbors on both sides have signed this petition? So the house to, it would be, I don't even know if it's east-west or 
or so. So it would be east and west, those two dwellings. Is anyone aware if those uh, residents have signed the petition, Mr. Jeffrey? I can speak to that. Well, Chad, your mic's off. Chad, your mic is off. A speaker issue, Chad, if you. We weren't hearing you. Okay. So, uh, Robert, is that your significant other with you there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, okay. Andrea. Okay. Can you help yeah. us with that, Andrea? Yeah, of course. So I was able to get um, the neighbors on the east, the north, the south, and the west that are all touching our lot. I got all of them, plus I got the neighbors uh, two houses down from them, two houses on the other side of the street, and then uh, two houses key cornered fine. off of my lot as well. So okay, just I interested. wasn't I'm sorry. I'm just interested in the properties to the east and west that are abutting your property. Right. And the reason why I asked that question is those property owners would be the most impacted either by sight line or by just having this uh, structure uh, in that front yard. So those, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea. Um, furthermore, a question, maybe Chad's already uh, got his mic going. Uh, Chad, a question on the lot coverage, just to make sure that this new addition is not going to pose an impact to lot coverage. Can you hear me? Yep. Good. Yes. No, it, it won't. Uh, we've confirmed that it meets the bylaw and every other requirement, um, in every other uh, respect, I should say. Um, so, uh, I, I, are you able to see the the screen when I share it? No, I just yeah. want to make sure that we've taken care of all these technical difficulties before they arise again. Um, do you see the uh, the error photo? Yeah. Yes. Just wanted to confirm. I, I know you've been through this, but I did go through the exercise of placing a dot on every uh, residence that signed that petition or signed the support. Um, and it uh, envelops the, the subject property. Uh, and just to reiterate, uh, we've reviewed the, the application in the context of the bylaw and with the exception of the front yard that they're re requesting the variance for, it meets the, the bylaw. Thank you, Chad. Okay. And through you, Mr. Chair, no further questions. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Chad. Anybody else? Want to weigh in on this? No. So then we need a motion. Are you satisfied, Lori? Thank you once again, Mr. Chair. Uh, in the case of uh, the minor, excuse me, the proposed minor variance for 12534 Ballard Street, I do believe that the uh, request is in keeping with the town's official plan, zoning bylaw, the intent of the zoning bylaw, and does meet the four tests of a minor variance. For those reasons, I do move to approve and grant the application. Uh, supported by uh, Paul Wilman. Any further discussion or comment? All in favor. I assume you're in favor, Paul. I didn't see your hand. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, all in favor, unanimous. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. I don't I don't think there'll be any objections but you've done your homework very well uh, but there is a waiting period uh, during which someone could object to our decision um, and then after that point you'll be able to get the building permit and all that from the town okay uh, may i ask how long that waiting period is 20 days donna yes 20. that's correct okay Donna, can I uh, clarify something on the engineering side? Like you had said uh, that the grading and draining plans are required. Chad, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, grading plans will be required at the time of the application for building permit. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, you're welcome to stay, but uh, shut your camera off makes my screen a lot less confusing. <laughs> okay, next, Donna, is uh, app application for consent to Revenberg Holdings. I think Tracy Elon Abs is here. There she is. Uh, who else do I have being here for this? That's it, Mr. Chair. Just you. Okay. You got the weight of the world on your shoulders, Tracy. <laughs> okay, Donna, go ahead. Application for consent B1621, Revenberg Holdings Limited, 6507 10th Concession Road. The purpose of the application is to request consent to sever a surplus dwelling lot having a frontage of 54.5 meters, 178.66 feet, a depth of approximately 111.8 meters, 366.84 feet, and a lot area of 0.6 hectares, 1.5 acres, identified as point part one on the sketch attached and outlined in red. The proposed severed lot contains a house and two accessory buildings. The retained farm parcel, identified as part two on the sketch attached and outlined in green, has an approximate lot area of 11.6 hectares, 28.6 acres, and is to be added to the abutting farm parcel to the north, outlined in blue. The resulting consolidated farm parcel, green and blue area, will have a total lot area of 36.1 hectares, 89.2 acres. In order to address the oversized dwelling lot, approval of a minor variance will be required as a condition of consent. The lands are designated agricultural in the Tecumseh official plan and zoned agricultural in the zoning bylaw 85-18. The following correspondence was received. Engineering comments. That the owner and to and provide the town of Tecumseh a written agreement for the reapportionment of drainage assessment for the subject lands in accordance with section 65.2 of the Ontario Drainage Act RSO 1990 as amended and that the associated costs of same be borne solely by the applicant. That the owner determine if there are any existing farm drainage tile systems extending through the parcel to be severed to the J.C. Smith drain and if existing farm drainage tile systems are found, that the owner redirect the tile systems around the parcel to be severed to the satisfaction of the chief building official prior to the severance being finalized. The owner should be advised that the J.C. Smith drain is located along the west side of the 10th concession road. The J.C. Smith drain is a municipal drain that was constructed under the provisions of the drainage act and which provides drainage for the subject lands. An engineer was previously appointed by the town to review the condition of the entire J.C. Smith drain and to prepare an engineer's report under the provisions of the Drainage Act for repair and improvements to this drain. A future report will be brought to Council for adoption to approve the works recommended in the future engineer's report. As per the Drainage Act, costs related to the repair and improvement of the municipal, municipal drain are assessed to the properties that drain into the system in accordance with the schedule of assessment that is included in the engineer's report. Through this process, repairs and improvements may be required to the open drain and existing access culverts that service the properties included in this severance application. No comments from building, no comments from fire, no concerns from Essex Power Line, and IRCA's comments are as follows. The noted lands are subject to our development, interference in wetlands and alterations to shorelines and water courses regulations under the Conservation Authorities Act, Ontario Regulation 15806. The par parcel falls within the regulated area of the J.C. Smith drain. The property owner will be required to obtain a permit and or clearance from the Essex Region Conservation Authority prior to any future construction or site alteration or other activities affected by Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Further, the subject property may lie wholly or partially within the event-based area of the Essex Region Source Protection Plan, which came into effect October 1, 2015. The Source Protection Plan was developed to provide measures to protect Essex Region's municipal drinking water sources. As a result of these policies, New projects in these areas may require approval 
by the Essex Region Risk Management Official to ensure that the appropriate actions are taken to mitigate any potential drinking water threats. Should your proposal require the installation of fuel storage on site, please contact the RMO to ensure that the handling and storage of fuel will not propose a significant risk to local sources of municipal drinking water. The Essex, Region Conser the Essex Region's Risk Management Official can be reached by email at riskmanagement at irca.org or 519-776-5209, extension 214. If a risk management plan has previously been negotiated on this property, it will be the responsibility of the new owner to contact IRCA risk management official to establish an update risk management plan. For any questions regarding source water protection and the applicable source protection plan policies that may apply to this site, please contact Essex Region risk management official. With a review of background information and aerial photograph, IRCA has no objection to this application for consent. Dell Canada has no concerns as well. That's it. Okay, thank you, Donna. Um, Therese, do you have any comment you wanna make for the committee at this point? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair, to the members of the committee. My name is Tracy Keelan Abs. I'm the planner for the um, applicant, representing them as agent. Um, we support administration's recommendation and we support the conditions. And again, this uh, farm will be merging with a farm to the north and consolidated into a larger 89 acre property. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, nobody's registered from the general public to speak to this, so committee. Questions from the committee, please. Uh, Lori, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Chair, uh, and good evening, Tracy. A question about the access to the farm Parcel once consolidated, will it have its own access separate from the dwelling? Yes, it uh, might even have two because each of the existing farms have their own entrances. So uh, I believe that's a condition that we will confirm the accesses to the farms. Okay, thank you for that. And then next question would just to confirm that the uh, consolidation, the severance doesn't seem to be, but to, um, to your knowledge, either to Tracy or to Chad, will any farmland be taken out of production as a result of the severance? Through you, Mr. Chair, I can answer that question. No, the uh, land, the severed parcel has been identified where there's an existing uh, uh, sort of grass line, and we're not taking any agricultural land out of productivity. We're actually staying inside of that because we were trying to get as close to the maximum lot area as possible. And we just went over a little bit. Thank you for that. And uh, nothing further from me, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Seems like a pretty simple one. Uh, anybody want to make a motion then? And I'll speak at once. Chris. I'll make a motion that application B1621, 65070 10th Concession Road, uh, is a, uh, be approved subject to the conditions as outlined in the report. Supported by Paul. Okay, any uh, question on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Now, the next one we have is a deferral from the last meeting. Uh, for some of you, this will be new because you weren't here for the last meeting. So I'm going to ask Donna to read the whole application. Um, just, you probably all already know the history of this, but um, it was an application made 
a few meetings ago um, and it was turned down um, on the on the I think the main objection at that time from the committee was um, the, the worry about drainage from the lots being available. And so we have this application, um, which would in fact uh, solve that problem. Um, but it's not the preferred one by the proponents. So they already have, they still have an objection uh, pending on a refusal of the first one. Um, so that's sort of the backstory on this. Uh, we'll let Donna go ahead. Welcome, uh, Mr. Sagan. Uh, I, I understand you're going to speak for the proponent at this, at this meeting. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Bart Sian, uh, we represent the applicant and happy to answer questions or make submissions when the opportunity okay. allows for it. Okay. Thank you. We're, we're going to do our regular routine here that uh, means that Donna is going to read the applications. Application for consent B1921 211 Ontario Limited 12809 Dillon Drive. The purpose of the application is to request consent to sever a residential lot having a frontage of 26.1 meters, 85.6 feet, an irregular depth, and an approximate lot area of 707 square meters, 7610.1 square feet, outlined in red on the attached sketch. The proposed rain retained lot has a frontage of 19.8 meters, 65 feet, a depth of 30.6 meters, 100.4 feet, and an approximate lot area of 603 square meters, 6,490.6 square feet, outlined in green on the attached sketch. Applications for minor variants A48-21 and A49-21 are being heard concurrently with this application to seek relief for a minimum lot area on both the severed and retained lots. As a condition of consent approval, the existing dwelling located on the property will be required to be demolished. The lands are designated residential in the town of Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R1 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. Correspondence from engineering are as follows. That the parcel to be retained and the parcel to be severed are to be serviced with separate water supplies, storm and sanitary sewer systems to the satisfaction of the Town of Tecumseh, Public Works Division, Water Services Division and Building Department prior to the severance being finalized. Note both the retained and severed lots will require, be required to outlet their storm drainage directly onto Dillon Drive storm sewer. The applicant will be required to provide a storm sewer connection from Dillon Drive storm sewer to both the retained and severed lots due to the existing municipal services and utilities located within the Barry Avenue right of way. It is anticipated that the storm service connection for the proposed retained lot may need to be installed within an easement on the proposed severed lot. For the storm sewer connection to the proposed retained lot, the applicant will be required to have a servicing plan prepared by a qualified engineer. In addition, the storm ser service connection must be secured in perpetuity and any required e easements must provide sufficient room for future maintenance needs. All of these requirements for the storm service connection to the proposed retained lot are to be designed by the applicant's engineer and are to be th to the satisfaction of the town engineer. The issue of ingress and egress to the site during times of flooding should be reviewed with Tecumseh Fire Department and Essex Region Conservation Authority. No comments from building, no comments from fire. IRCA's comments are as follows. The noted lands are subject to the development interface and wetlands and alteration to shorelines and water coasts regulations under the Conservation Authorities Act, Ontario Regulation 15806. The parcel falls within the regulated area of Lake St. Clair. The property owner will be required to obtain a permit and or clearance from IRCA prior to any construction or site alteration or other activities affected by Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. 
Upon review of the application and available background information, we note that the low-lying nature of the roadway may result in excess water over the road during a 1-100 year flood event. The municipality must confirm through applicable emergency services that they have the ability to safely access this area during a 1-100 year flood event in order to fulfill the municipality's responsibilities under section 3.1.7 of the provincial policy statement 2020. Additionally, the applicant must obtain a section 28 permit from IRCA prior to undertaking any developments on the site. Application for consent A4821-219-8711, Ontario Limited, 12809 Dillon Drive. The purpose of the application is to request relief from subsection 6.1.3A of Zoning Bylaw 1746, which establishes a minimum lot area of 789 square meters 8,492.7 square feet. The applicant is seeking relief for minimum lot area of 707 square meters, 7,610.1 square feet, outlined in red on the attached sketch as a condition of consent application B19-21 being heard concurrently with this application. The lands are designated residential in the Tecumseh official plan and zoned R1 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. Application for minor variance A49-21, same owner, same address. The purpose of the application is to request relief from subsection 6.1.3A of zoning bylaw 1746, which establishes a minimum lot area of 789 square meters, 8,492.7 square feet. The applicant is seeking relief for minimum lot area of 603 square meters, 6,000. 490.6 square feet outlined in green on the attached sketch as a condition of consent B1921 being heard concurrently with this application. The lands are designated uh, residential in the Tecumseh official plan and zoned R1 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. Engineering comments are as follows. As part of the building permit process, the owner will be required to submit an engineered drainage and grading plan showing how stormwater will be controlled to prevent it from flowing onto neighboring properties to the satisfaction of the chief building official. No comments from building, no comments from fire, and the IRCA's comments are the same as what was outlined in the uh, consent application. Okay, thank you, Donna. Uh, Mr. Sagan, do you have anything you would like to uh, add or tell us about this? Well, thank you for the opportunity. Of course, uh, as the committee is well aware, the, the property uh, has been presented for consideration in a prior application. Um, again, the same essential request, it's just a different orientation for all intents and purposes. The original that was essentially north-south um, was consistent with the original plan of subdivision for the property, each resulting in uh, the property is essentially a double lot. Uh, and we were looking to restore it to uh, the original 50 foot lots that had existed at that time. Um, and certainly based on the uh, feedback that came out of that application, this new orientation running more east-west, I guess you could say fronting off Barry, uh, was presented as maybe a, a more feasible or viable or, or acceptable option. So from my client's perspective, uh, he's certainly happy um, with this orientation. Uh, it's understood that the, uh, the, 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 this, um, presentation will require access of both lots to the uh, stormwater uh, system that's available on Dillon Drive that presents some challenge but certainly undertakes to accept that responsibility understands that the uh, drainage uh, area um, that's drainage concerns in this area are of concern and is certainly willing to undertake that um, that uh, that undertaking and in as far as the uh, resulting building envelopes that are left Obviously, with the size of the property, there's only very limited um, opportunities to be able to kind of build anything that naturally fits in the area, which is of, of certainly the intention of the client when looking to uh, see what would be um, appropriate for the area. Certainly, the, the lot sizes and the area will, will essentially dictate what can and can't be built there from an from a investment standpoint and from an overall um, uh, uh, aesthetic. So uh, for our part, 
um, we know that this complicates things, having the initial application kind of still out there uh, and this one now before the, the committee. It's not our intention to have it both ways. It's understood that this can only be built uh, one way. It's either going to be north, south, east, west. And, I, and for our client's perspective, if, if the committee was inclined to grant us uh, th this application the way it is presented before you today, we're happy to um, withdraw and um, and close that uh, earlier application uh, and just move forward with this one um, with uh, with no concerns or reservations. Um, uh, I guess from our perspective is that our, the worst case scenario would have been that this wasn't going to be responded to favorably today and left with no option. I shouldn't say that I suppose the only option we would have is to treat those original lots on the plan as whole lots and then maybe try to work with part of it resulting in some irregular outcome. Our intention was always to have the committee involved, um, be well aware from the outset of our intention as far as developing it, come up with a, a, um, uh, a uh, an arrangement that um, was supported by the municipality. Uh, Mike himself is a, a resident. He certainly developed other properties in the area. He's he's uh, he's mindful of the interests of the uh, of the uh, of the neighbors, and uh, we'll keep that in mind going forward. But uh, we're happy that the report that was presented does confirm that. It, uh, at least from a planning perspective, fits, and, and from our client standpoint, uh, uh, we're content with the uh, with the conditions that were presented. Except I would like to make um, a submission as it relates to the uh, to the dedication uh, for parkland provision that's in the conditions. Um, obviously, with this property being essentially a double lot, and we're looking to restore it to a, a double lot. It, we're hoping that we could look at it as being a restoration of its original intent uh, and seek to have that condition uh, perhaps waived in the circumstances. Um, but with the house being on it and the provision that it be based on market value of the land being conveyed the day immediately prior to the approval in principle, which would be essentially yesterday, um, it would make for an awkward uh, appraisal standpoint because there's a house in the new proposed lot uh, run in the middle of it. And this is all in contemplation of the house being torn down and these being vacant properties. So we would just want maybe that to be revised to confirm that it would only apply to the severed parcel and only as vacant land. So with that, I'll open it to the committee for questions. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have three people uh, who registered to be with us today. Donna, do you know if any of them want to speak? Um, I believe um, Diane Sullivan wishes to speak. I didn't get confirmation back um, from Paul Schisler or Sue Lalone, but I, I believe I they see. are present. So I see Paul uh, Schammer came on. So yeah, so I I'm expect. suspecting that he would like to speak to the matter yeah. as well. Okay. Uh, oh, Diane is on too. All right, Paul, do you, this morning we'll hear from you. Yes, Chairperson, uh, my my concerns were with regards to the Canada Post lockbox and those concerns are noted in the minutes of the meeting uh, through uh, September the 7th, 27th, which I, uh, is the first uh, meeting for the applicant on this matter. Um, they're still valid and uh, uh, I'm not going to go through them again, but obviously, uh, with the lots fronting on um, on Barry, there's quite a likelihood that the lockbox, which is also on Barry, would have to be removed uh, or moved, relocated. And I'm representing the neighbors that are uh, elderly neighbors that are in our our area right here. Who, who have quite a stroll to get to this lockbox and, and, and there's no sidewalks and uh, just wanna note that uh, they you know really don't want it to, too much farther away from where it is. So that, that's only my concern. So it, it's all noted in the minutes of the previous meeting, but become particularly more valid now that the, the proponent is uh, proposing to uh, front of or have the frontage on of, of the lots on Barry. That's all, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, as part of the discussion, uh, Mr. Jeffrey uh, had an opinion about 
um, the town's influence on the on the location of a lot of a uh, of a um, postal station or postal lockbox there. Do you want to go through that again, Chad? Yeah. Mr. Chair, just, I'm not entirely, I, I don't recall what I said about that last time, but what I want to mention is that this orientation doesn't preclude uh, that box from staying where it is. Um, and it doesn't preclude the severed, post severed lot from getting access off of Dillon. Um, there's many ways to design a house on that lot. So you can get access either off of Barry or Dillon, but in either case, uh, they would have to get a permit from Public Works. And um, that would definitely weigh into the decision as to where that that uh, access could be located. So I don't see the, the, the box moving at all as a result of this application. No, and I think uh, I think part of what you said last time was we have that we, other than through a great struggle, we have very little to say about where the postal service puts those lock, spot, lock boxes. Uh, only, we can only comment them, uh, on them in terms of safety of their location and the ability of the street to handle the traffic pulling over. So um, if, it, if it were to be changed, it would be at the behest of the, of the neighbors who would want it changed. I think that's the only time I've ever, ever seen a lockbox be moved or re relocated or not positioned where they first started to build it. <laughs> Um, was because the neighbor, the up, upheaval from the neighbors, because they wanted to be and, somewhere else or they wanted it to be there. Or, and that's uh, chair, chair, chairperson, all due respect, that's what happened actually in this case originally. Yeah. Originally, the lockbox was to be on Dillon Drive. And yeah. if you go by the property, you'll see where the, they had already had the curb cut out to put the yeah. lockbox there. Yeah. And we petitioned the, the town and Canada Post to not have it put there because it's kind of a dangerous corner there actually because of the change in grade and the sweeping turns that people make and it's not really a safe place to pull over. So it was moved up the hill, so to speak, and put on the berry. So, so the, that's, that's where we got, we went through the process and now we're just concerned that it may have to end up going farther away again. Well, with that background, I, I would suggest to you, Paul, that you, you're even less likely to see it move. That's um, good. <laughs> the feds aren't going to want to be moving that. They'd have to put it on wheels, I think, to, yeah. if they were going to move it again. So um, That's all chairperson. Yeah. And, and the house on that lot can still face Dylan. So it's not like it's going to be right in their front yard if, if they choose to to orient the house a different way. Um, okay, uh, Diane, you were there and you're gone. There you are, you're back. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, my husband and I are, um, we stated our concerns at the uh, Zoom meeting in September. Um, our concern was the house is facing on to Dylan. And we're very happy to hear that the change has been made um, and hope that it goes through, that they are on Barry. That's about um, okay. well, how we at the feel. Very least, at the very least, the house would, uh, there would only be one house facing yep. Dylan instead yep. of two. Yep. Uh, yes. The other, the other one has to be on Barry, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. So, so there would be uh, one house or excuse me, one lot um, adjacent to R as opposed to two. So. Right. Right, and Andrea, you're listening only, there you are. Yeah, Mr. Chair, but Andrea, if you remember, oh. um, she uh, is my colleague and represented the applicant in the earlier meetings. And do you have any, oh. So you're you're doing the duty tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's a team okay. effort, and and you'll see Mr. Matrevsky is also listed. He represents the uh, corporate applicant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. All right. So, uh, questions from the committee. With all that background, Lori. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening to the applicants, uh, Andrea. Nice to see you for the third month in a row. Uh, we thank you all for your patience and uh, good to hear from you as well, Bart. The question I have actually is to administration to Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, Chad has done a tremendous job in preparing a section of his of the planning report, administration's report, on the reasons why we defer this application. The purpose I believe that we should be considering is why we deferred. And I would like if we could for the public record for Mr. Jeffrey to explain, uh, rather than having it just in writing, if we could hear it tonight so everyone can hear in case we haven't read, uh, the reasons behind the deferral and uh, Mr. Jeffrey's opinion and the research that was conducted uh, in response to those concerns that we had. Mr. Chair, thank you for that question. Yeah, um, the primary reason that the application was denied initially was because of the, um, the, the north-south orientation of the lots um, didn't allow for a uh, suitably sized building envelope. That was the reason. Uh, the planning report supported the, the application, the initial application, on the basis of it, uh, it represented uh, infill and intensification and met a number of good planning policies. Um, but there were concerns over the orientation uh, and in particular, the, the width of the westerly lot um, due to the exterior side yard being larger than the interior side yard. And that really narrowed the, the buildable area. Um, and at the suggestion of one of the committee members, this new orientation was, was uh, developed. Uh, and that's what was before the committee at the last meeting. Um, it was deferred at that meeting because it wasn't clear as to whether uh, we could hear the two applications at the same time and the committee wanted to know more about the implications of that. Um, so that, that was one reason. Uh, and the other reason was with respect to the, um, the conditions and the time period in which the conditions must be met, which is, was, was one year. Uh, technically, it still is one year, but through Bill 276, that is changing to two years. Um, upon proclamation of that bill, which we understand is coming very soon, uh, and it will be retroactive to applications that have been approved recently and that are before the board. So the concern that the, if the one application was approved and the board didn't resolve the matter on the, the initial application in time, that the severance would last because that one year period would be up. It's no longer a concern because it's going to two years. You know, so they'll have two years to meet your, your uh, conditions of consent. And I've, you know, I've never seen a board hearing take, take more than, than a year to, to schedule and resolve. Um, so uh, that isn't a concern any longer. And um, we've confirmed through our lawyer uh, that we can hear this application, even though the other application has been uh, appealed to the board. And there's a condition that we're recommending uh, to address that uh, peculiarity, and that's that uh, the board either uh, deny that application or the applicants withdraw it in order to um, in order for this application to proceed. So that uh, is part of the recommendation tonight, to Mr. Chair, and uh, that I believe uh, addresses the the concerns that the committee had uh, at the last meeting. If there's any other explanation necessary, please let me know. All right. Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you for that explanation. I just want confirmation, if I could, from the applicant or representatives, the condition, if imposed, to withdraw the appeal at, at OLT, is that something that your client is willing to, to do? Um, yes, uh, and, and, and certainly. Um, it is in our intention to pursue that if a satisfactory outcome is available tonight on the application that's before the committee. Okay, just wanted confirmation. I think I heard that earlier, but thank you for that. And nothing for the Thank you. Anything else? Sorry. Right. No. Uh, Tony? Uh, through you, my, uh, Mr. Chair, my question actually would be for administration. Um, with regards to the applicant asking for the, I'm guessing it's the elimination of condition number six, and that's that 5% cash for the parkland. 
what are the comments with that? And upon the building permit applications, what development charges will be charged here? Is it only for one lot since there is an existing home or will it be charged for both of them? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, with respect to the development charge, there'll only be one development charge because they'll get a credit for the house that exists. So even if they were to demolish that, build another one, there would be a credit applied toward that. So it would be one development charge for a single unit dwelling. Uh, with respect to the park fee, we, we, we uh, think that it's appropriate to apply that. Currently, there's one lot. Uh, it consists of uh, two whole lots in a plan of subdivision as well as part of a, an alleyway at the back. So there's actually three parcels involved. And these, these parcels aren't conveyable um, right now. So there's ability to build one house on this large lot. And that's why they're before the committee to, to create a, um, a, a severance to allow for a second dwelling to be built. And that second dwelling puts pressures on the town's park system. So that's the principle behind that. We charge 5% of the value of the land on the seven parcel only. Um, and that value is to be determined the day before uh, approval was given. So it's fairly standard. It doesn't, Chad, that's, that's, you're just quoting what the rule is, but uh, is that something that the committee could vary in their wisdom, seeing as the value of the land is a lot higher because it's not in the state it was when it was first created. We're creating a lot, and as a matter of fact, the day after this thing is passed, that house will be gone, it'll be a vacant lot again. So, would it be possible for the committee to say uh, the value of the lot as a vacant lot the day before um, the day before this is passed um, instead of the value of the lot fully developed with the house on it? <coughs> Mr. Chair, an, an appraiser would would determine what that value would be if, if it was a vacant vacant lot um, you know, without the <coughs> service connections constructed to it and apply that logic in, in, uh, in applying the 5% to that. Um, the other option is for the longest time, we've had a, a standing policy that we're currently reviewing uh, where we just put a flat rate on the, on the park fee of 750. Um, However, we're, we're looking at that because we feel that it has to be, be uh, reviewed and adjusted. But right now, that is uh, essentially without the, without the market um, appraisal, we apply a flat rate of $750 to, to the vacant land. So if the committee is more comfortable with that, we can apply that $750. All right. Well, it's something for them to consider. I just want to make sure they have all the options available to them. Um, I think the... My, in my own opinion, uh, which comes for very little, um, seems to me that it's it's unfairly highly, it would be unfairly highly valued with this particular, particular set of facts. Um, but that's for the committee to decide. Um, the other question I had, I did have a question before anybody else gets in there. Um, a permanent easement looks like it might have to be through the through the Norway yacht at some point, at some place. And if it's a permanent easement, it needs to have uh, the blessing of this committee. And it has to be built through a basically another severance uh, proposal, right? That was for you, Chad. <laughs> So at what point do we have to do that? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm glad you asked that question because there is a way to, to address that now. Um, there are other options to be explored, I think, before that easement needs to be created. Um, although I'm not sure of the likelihood of getting it, um, it, the storm sewer, the storm connection through the right of way along Barry up to Dillon. I understand there might be some complications with respect to the crowding of services in that area. So it, it will likely have to go through an easement on the severed lot. And if the committee is comfortable, it, <coughs> it could it could grant, um, and it feels like it, it, it wants to, if the committee wants to support this application, it could uh, grant it along with 
uh, an easement for, st for storm um, across the severed parcel to the satisfaction of the town's uh, drain uh, to the town's uh, engineer. Okay. So we're not, so we're not coming back right. at a later date for you know the, the consent to get that easement in place. Sort of an if needed clause, you mean? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else on the committee want to ask questions? Uh, Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, a uh, question for Chad. I know he provided uh, the building envelope for each lot, and I know the lot that's most um, uh, southerly um, that faces uh, Barry is quite undersized to what is the uh, standard um, you know, lot size for Tecumseh. Will the applicant be looking at coming to the committee again and asking for a larger building envelope for um, for that particular lot? And I, I'll welcome comments from either Chad or, or the applicant. I think, uh, Mr. Sigan, maybe you could help us. With sure, no, I can help with that. And, and um, the building envelope is admittedly small, but uh, my client has undertaken a review of options and the viability of doing something uh, appropriate with that space and is content to work with it. So I can tell you that as it stands right now, there is no intention to do that. We haven't gotten too far along in the um, in the construction phase or the, or the planning phase for the actual dwelling that's to be constructed on it, because it's all very contingent at this point, but he's comfortable with the building envelopes as they are right now. Okay. Good Thank you, Ryan. No, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have a question or comment? Um, Donna, I can't remember. Did you read the uh, the list of uh, conditions that are attached to the engineering report? No, I did not. Okay, uh, Mr. Sagan, do you have those? Okay. Yes, I do. And it's, and it's only the number six, the uh, park fee. That's you correct, everything else. You had a problem with. Okay. All right, so two questions. Do we want to uh, apply the flat fee for park fee in, uh, in recognizing the particular set of circumstances there are with this application. Don't all talk, don't all talk at once. Laurie. Mr. Chair, are you asking us to pre prepare a motion or put a motion on the table? Well, I'm asking, I'm looking for a consensus as to what we want to do because there will be another um, uh, variance from these conditions about about the easement and permitting the easement without another application. So, sure. Uh, I'm just trying to I get it all cleaned up so then we have a motion. That's what I'm doing. Sure. In in my recommendation, I don't move to remove the condition or amend the condition as written in the agreement. Excuse me, in in the planning report. My reasoning is because the policy is currently in place and has been adopted by administration and council as such with 5% parkland in, or cash in lieu for parkland. Even though it is on the table currently and being revised or currently being reconsidered, it's not. it has not been uh, put through senior administration for approval or through to council if that is the process. So for that, those reasons, personally, I'm not willing to lift that condition. Okay. I support, I support to... Lori. Yeah. I support yeah. Lori's uh, comments. Okay, anybody else want to weigh in? Paul? Oh, you might, Paul. I support Lori and her comments as well. Okay. All right, so we'll forget about that one. Um, now, what about the in, including uh, in the motion eventually something about allowing the easement, approving the easement? Even though we don't have a drawing, we don't have any detail about where it might be, is there a danger in approving a general easement? Daniel. No, I think I think it makes sense to do that, Mr. Chair, um, because we know that you can't sever the two lots without that easement. We already been advised that by uh, by administration, so I think we should include it in this uh, motion as well. Okay. 
I see Tony nodding. Is that? Yep, I'll I'll support that. Okay. Um, Chad, you might have to work on developing some wording for that. So I'll take care let's of replace you. number six condition or eliminate number six condition in the motion. No, I'm sorry. We're leaving number six condition in the motion. Um, but we need something in the motion to talk about uh, approving an easement as well. Laurie? Maybe in your recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair, can we put something with the verbiage of to the satisfaction of the town or to the satisfaction of the town solicitor, something to ensure that the, the easement, easement is... Yeah, that it isn't willy-nilly, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but generally the wording for that is probably pretty standard. Chad? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may, I think if you, you want to um, consider approving this application, it could be done with an amendment um, to, to it, uh, suggesting that the severance be granted along with an easement for a storm sewer across the severed parcel to the satisfaction of the town's engineer. Okay. So Donna, that's in the, we can go back and listen to the tape, I guess, but <laughs> we can add that to the motion if somebody wants to move it that way. I've noted um, it, thanks Tom. Sorry? I've noted it, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, so, any other questions? Dan, you, you had your hand up there for a sec, Daniel. Okay. In that case, uh, somebody want to make a motion? Lori? Okay. There are a lot of numbers. I think there's like four applications if I'm not mistaken, Donna. So I'm going to assume this is in reference to all of the applications, all of them. All of them. Okay. Uh, so in, uh, in these uh, circumstances, uh, we are, uh, I believe that the severance is in keeping with the nature of the community, the surrounding properties is uh, consistent with uh, our policies in the official plan meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. And uh, for these reasons, I move to approve the consent to sever as well as the associated minor variance applications and would also recommend imposing the conditions as outlined in the planning report. Period. Okay. The motion, the motion as amended to include right permission for the easement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Second here. Paul? <laughs> I guess you have Tony, it's okay. <laughs> he was quicker today than me. Well, he's farther up on my screen too, so. <laughs> um, okay, any additional comment, question? On the question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. We got a deal, Mr. Sagan. Uh, thank you, committee members. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey, for your work on it. Enjoy your evening. Okay. Thanks very much. And thanks to you too, Andrea. You started this out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot of work went into it. Very good. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. So that's that. Uh, planning report. Oh, we Excuse me, not all night. So I've got nothing left on the agenda. Any new business? Uh, Chad. Yes, Mr. Chair, um, we're recommending that uh, in the Donna's absence over the next three weeks that the committee appoint me as a temporary uh, secretary treasurer to the committee uh, in, until December 13th because there are a number of uh, in progress um, severance applications that 
um, are due to close and or you know, the, the one year is coming up. Um, so we will need someone who's able to, to stamp the, the deed. Uh, and yeah, so under section 44, eight of the planning act of the committee has the authority to appoint a secretary treasurer. Uh, and so the condition of this appointment will be just in the absence of the, um, the current secretary treasurer or, or until the, December 13th. Moved by. I'll move that motion. <laughs> Tony, you're just not quick enough. Uh, like, well, further down the list, I'll let the higher go. <laughs> I'm sorry, who seconded it? Uh, Paul. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right. Thank you. Anything else? When is our December meeting, by the way? Do we have one? 13th, right? That's correct. It's a Monday, so it's not a Friday at least. Um, okay, good. Yeah, um, after adjournment, I think I have the committee just for a second. Okay. So, uh, motion for adjournment, I guess. Tony. <laughs> I'm going to change Chris. my name to Triple A, <laughs> so I'm Tony at the top Chris, of every right. list. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Can I have Donna? Uh, are we still recording? We are, so I'm just waiting for it to go off. Oh, okay. Question for Donna. 